Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna answer a question that someone has posed uh, to me. He's a Platinum member on the community and we're gonna answer it and I'll answer it to, to everyone on YouTube uh, because I think it is pertinent to the cycle. So let's look at the question. I'll give you my financial opinions around it and uh, we'll talk about it. So the question is, hi Andy, why do recessions follow after the yield curve on inversion? Why did gold and silver run so hard after the 2008 financial crisis? Two questions which are relevant for the end game of this cycle. Uh, so number one, thanks for asking the question. Thanks for reaching out. Uh, I've got no problem answering these questions and giving my opinions around this. Um, and again, my opinions may run different than others, but um, I'll give you my opinions here. So why did the recession follow after the yield curve on, on inversion? So uh, here is uh, here's the, some of the data. This is the TYX, TNX. Um, a lot of people talk about the 2 and 10. Uh, there's the 2 and 10 there. Uh, I, I, TYX, TNX, the 30-year and the 10-year uh, is better because I flipped it the other way. So you can flip it at the 10 and 2, uh, which is another way that you could do it. Uh, and you can see I've got gold on the bottom here uh, because you asked about gold as well. Uh, so I think that gold follows the yield curve more so than what people think. It, it's I think where people get confused is you you need to understand and look at the markets from the paradigm of of herd mentality, herd mentality and market conditions. So when we look at this, what we have here is we've got the yield curve basically going up and down. It is inverting, uninverting. You know, and 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 doing those things. So uh, inverting is when it's going down. Uninverting is when it goes up. Uh, a lot of the times, the yield curve, the yield curve is is just a function of the market conditions. Period. Bam. It's the market having inflation and then the yield curve inverting. It's it's humans interacting under a certain market condition and the yield curve is a representation of where you are at in the cycle. So I'll, let me say that one more time, just so you guys understand. The yield curve, inverting and uninverting, is a representation of the, the market, of where we're at in the cycle and of the market. So what happens is when you get inflation, uh, and you go through that real estate cycle uh, like we've got. So I, I pulled this up too. You're going through this real estate cycle. The yield curve reacts to this. And the yield curve will invert based off of uh, inflation in the system. So if you get inflation, people are are going to react to that inflation. And what happens is people are going to react and they start selling their two-year yield bonds that are yielding very low yields in a, high, in a highly inflationary environment. So what happens is they sell it and the yield curve inverts. So we can go back and we can look at this instance in time here. We, let's say you're in a low inflationary environment. Um, really what this is, is this is the real estate cycle going back and forth. And the yield curve is representing that real estate cycle. So if we were to look, we can look back in history. Let me, I don't have the, the thing here. One second, I know where I can pick it up real quick. Uh, we can go here and I'm pretty sure I've got it in this one. So we can see the high inventory levels. During these levels, you're going to have low inflation. So low inflation from your inventory of homes because there's there's no expansionary phase of real estate going on when you've got greater than eight months. This is a bubble in real estate. It happened in the 70s. It happened in the early 80s. It happened in the early 90s was a recovery phase. And then we had a big recovery phase from 2009 and onward. 
If we were to look at that, you can see the yield curve during those time frames. Think of big recovery phases as the yield curve um, kind of goes upward uh, in a in a recession slash recovery phase. So in '90 we had a we had a bu a, a bust cycle in 1990. That's down here. That's a bust in the housing uh, housing cycle. What happens is the lead up to the housing cycle is inflationary. So it drives down the yield curve. Uh, and, and when we bust, the yield curve will be inverted. The, yield, the, the housing market busts and we come out of it. And that is your, your uh, uninversion of the yield curve. So your question is, why does the yield curve uninvert? Because it's part of the cycle. Uh, the cycle of inflation you know, pushed it down to uh, a yield curve that, in, that inverts. That's the inflation causing that inversion. When the inflation driver ceases to exist, well, what happens next? We see weakness in the markets. We see things that could potentially crash, like unemployment goes up, all these different things. So what the market does and what the Federal Reserve does is they lower interest rates to spur economic activity. But it's too late. So the yield curve, when it when it pauses and starts to uninvert, it means that the cycle is weakening. And generally, it's too late and yields dropping are not going to, to save the market and you go into a slowdown or a recession, part of the cycle. So when we look at history, uh, we had a boom up till 1990. And you can see 1990s right here, the yield curve's inverted. Uh, you can see with the uh, 1990s right here, we had too much inventory, we built too many homes, and we're gonna get a slowdown from the real estate cycle. That slowdown leads to unemployment in the construction cycle. People get laid off, we're not building as many homes, uh, the inflation ceases to exist because you don't have those new loans against new homes, inventory builds, and we get a recession with the yield curve uninverted. We go and we start the cycle again. We, we, we kind of tighten up in 93, nine, you know, 93. We come back down and we invert the curve back to uh, this area down here in the late 1990s. It just means that the housing market is in a better uh, situation. That's all it means. Then in 1998, 99, and then into 2001, uh, another, we had another problem where the curve inverted, it's, it's tighter market conditions, and we have a recession as we come up off those bottoms. Something in the market broke. Uh, this here is your uh, tech bubble, your tech bubble. And during that time frame, if you were to look at the real estate housing market, um, it was still low. because So we, we tightened up. Uh, from 95 onward, we tightened up inventory levels to a pretty tight level in the 90s and 2000s. But the housing market wasn't the driver of the 2001 uh, crash here. So the bond market caught something that was outside of the uh, housing market. So what happened was we have a slowdown in the market due to that tech bubble. We had a bubble in the tech stocks and that impacted the market. What they did is they lowered interest rates during this time frame, and that lowering of interest rates caused basically the real estate market to kick back up. We had a real estate market boom during that time frame. Uh, that's what basically pushed yields, the yield curve back into an inversion down here. It inverted again. It was interest rates and then the loading of the real estate market. And then what you saw is the real estate market went back into a bubble. Uh, in It started in like 06, you know, 05, 06, 07, 08. That, that's a bubble, guys. You have, you have a stark increase of inventory in your uh, real estate existing ho homes market. And... That is what drove, in my opinion, the 
yield curve to uninvert during that time frame. Now, it crashes occur when the yield curve uninverts because what happens is there's weakness in the market. People realize there's weakness in the market. They start to cut rates, but it's too late to save the market. So the crash generally happens when the powers that be, when, when Powell or the Federal Reserve chairman, they see it, but they can't stop the crash. There's too much momentum behind it. They can't reverse it. And that's why the crash occurs somewhere when the yield curve starts to uninvert in this sector in here. That's in 2008. So that's why you see crashes during the uninversion of the yield curve. Now, I know you asked about gold. Uh, and we're looking at the tens and twos here. Generally, what happens is you get an inverted yield curve. This is a good time to be buying gold. When the yield curve inverts like this and then it starts to uninvert, you'll see gold take off. And you can see this is one big move from a low point to a high point in gold. So gold is more or less a function of, it, it does very well under a period of the cycle. And where it does well is when the yield curve inverts and uninverts. That is why it's called a safe haven metal, because the safe haven metal does well under the market conditions of the cycle uninverting. That's where it gets its name. And you can see we went from a very low part of the cycle uh, all the way to a very high portion of the cycle. And that's the gold price on the bottom there. You asked, well, why did gold price go up so much in 2008, 2009? Because the curve was an uninverting. The curve was uninverting during that entire time. And they also printed money, too. We also saw weakness in the dollar during certain portions of this curve as well. But the weakness of the dollar is another sign of where we are in the cycle. <laughs> uh, weakness in the DXY is a relative measurement, in my opinion. The, the relative measurement is a relative measurement of monetary tightness backing the currencies. So if Europe, the euro, has tighter monetary policy than the dollar, then the dollar will decrease against the euro during that time frame. And vice versa, if, if America has tighter monetary policy than euro and other currencies, then the dollar DXY will go up. So DXY is just a function of monetary tightness of that currency is is the currency that's the way that i view it so what we're waiting for is where are we exactly in the cycle today and how do you know where we are in the cycle well interest rates are more or less a function of where we're at in the cycle and the yield curve inverting is more or less a function of where we're at in the cycle so if we were to look at where we're at in the cycle today um, in my opinion and I know we've got gold going down a little bit, but I think that's a false move. It, it, I don't think it's going to be sustaining for a very long period of time. Um, I, I think gold, where it's at, is another function of where we're at in the cycle. So a lot of the times we get in, this is an inversion of the yield curve. We're already inverted quite a bit. Let me drop gold here. What we've got here is basically the curve is inverted. And we're starting to uninvert the curve. Um, what's happening right now is the short end is not going up as much as the long end. So the long end is going up more than the short end. This is the size of what it's going up. And you can see that this is increasing. So this is going up more than that. And then this ratio goes up. We're, we're think. If you look at precious metals basically down at this bottom here, that is a really good time to accumulate metals. And I understand people are going to say, well, you know, it hasn't broken out. It hasn't done this. Well, guys, we're playing, we're playing the information that's in front of the herd moving. This here is a function of the conditions and the herd's going to come right after it. The herd is going to create the chart patterns that are going to be uh, telling us that this is a buy, but we're ahead of that curve. 
So as the yield curve uninverts, uh, as it as it comes back up like this, um, this is generally where gold and silver and precious metals start to outperform. It doesn't mean that it will happen immediately. So you can you can see it's during other cycles that we were inverted since 2018 all the way till uh, 2020. This is a huge inversion of the of the yield curve, and and it lasted. For you know, July of 2018 to about you know February of 2020, then we had a big move to the upside. February 2020 and March was the crash, the uninversion of the yield curve. That also occurred back here uh, when the housing market we we got an inversion of the yield curve, and you can see how this thing really put in that rounded the rounded bottom. Uh, you can see this thing kind of rounded up and turned on up. Um, so that lasted, we came and inverted quite a bit, let's say 05, all the way to an uninversion of about 07, 07 and 05. That was a couple of years inverted. That's a portion of where we should be. This is a really good spot to be where oil goes ballistic. Uh, but you can also accumulate at some point as this starts to come back up like this, this is a good spot to start to accumulate precious metals in 07 and 08 you're going to get a slowdown. So in 07, if you were in, in 08, uh, 07, 08, if you were to start to accumulate gold uh, and and you look at this, so we look at 07 and 08. Uh, so 07 and 08 would be like in this area here, that, that like consolidation here, 06, 07 uh, into maybe 08 a little bit. And then you would have accumulated roughly at about $600. Six seven hundred dollars in this area right here, and then it went all the way up to uh, to you know eighteen hundred bucks. That would have been a really good spot to be accumulating. We can even look at you know a company like Wheat and Precious Metals. If you had purchased it in 06, uh, 07 in this tip here, uh, it was four or five bucks, and it went all the way to twenty eleven up here at about forty. You would have made a lot of money in a very short period of time. Uh, so what we're what you want to do, in my opinion, is understand the yield curve inside and out. Why is it important? It's important because it tells you where you're at in the cycle. And where you're at in the cycle is going to put pressures on the herd to behave in a certain manner. And all you're doing is you're front running the herd. And if you're patient enough and you know the cycle well enough, you can use technical analysis to your advantage to try to pinpoint your entry points, to validate where we're at in the cycle, to make sure that what you're invested is still going to go and increase. So during a later stage of the cycle, what you generally see is an inverted yield curve. You're in an expansionary phase of real estate. Oil and uranium take off. And what, what do we have going on right now, guys? Oil and uranium are taking off. We're in a late stage uh, of this cycle. Uh, we're in an expansionary phase of real estate. And I know some people are going to debate that. And maybe we get a slowdown in the middle of this expansion phase of real estate. It's very, very possible. Very possible. We have low inventory of existing homes, which means we're not towards a crash stage from real estate. Something could happen that's outside of the real estate market if the curve starts to uninvert. Um, the curve starts to uninvert because people get afraid of something in the markets and people start piling into bonds. We're seeing interest rates continue to the upside. People are not piling into bonds at this time. Okay, so that is a function of where we're at in the cycle. Um, and I don't know if because of so much bond releases, if the interest rates are actually going to come back down if there's going to be enough scare to actually bring interest rates back to the downside. Um, what generally happens is, and I'll, I'll describe it to best of how, I, how I've how i kind of understood it, uh, and I didn't read this through books, it's just my understanding of, of what I think is occurring. Um, I think what's occurring is that the banks know that there's problems in the market. Uh, they know that the problems are large enough to make an impact to the market. 
and that the banks are up front run everyone else into bonds. So they all they run into bonds. And when they run into bonds, what that does is it changes the yield curve. It uninverts the yield curve. So if they know that a lot of things are going, a lot of people or, or homes are going into foreclosure or going into bankruptcy, they are going to front run that and, and place large chunks of money into bonds. And that generally uh, uninverts the yield curve because they're front running everyone else. Uh, it's a signal that something is bad in the market. And the banks, I think, are the ones that are, they know it. They have insider information. They start buying bonds. Uh, the yield curve uninverts. The Fed Reserve, they're part of the banks too. They start to uninvert the, they, they start to lower interest rates, but the, the weakness in the, in the market is already present. And we get the crash anyway. And under those conditions, gold does very well. Gold and uh, TLT. Long duration bonds will do very well under those market conditions. Uh, you will also see bank stocks suffer if they take on enough losses. So you'll see bank stocks start to trade to the downside. <laughs> They'll start selling each other, so to speak. Uh, so that is what the market conditions uh, and the cycle is what you really want to understand. And that's why it's one of the three pillars uh, of what I look at. It's ratios. Ratios tell you where money is and isn't. You can see how money is flowing in the markets uh, because that's what changes asset prices. It's money flows. The market conditions are what changes the asset flows. And the way that you can look at the market conditions, one of the ways is through the yield curve and how it inverts and uninverts. And that's why you want to be an expert in cycles, the yield curve inversion and uninversion. You need to know that inside and out. And it can tell you where to basically place money during the cycle. So uh, I think that, well, I already described where we're at in the cycle. It's inverted. Uh, uranium, energy, those usually do very well in this period. The next right behind it, it's going to be gold and silver and platinum. That's when the yield curve inverts and it's going to start to come back up. So I overlap some of my investments. I'm not only one or the other. And when the yield curve uninverts for whatever reason, uh, I think gold and silver are going to take off. The, the, we're going to see weakness in the DXY as well, is, is my guess. So that's what I've got for today, guys. If you guys like the content, give me a thumb up. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you'd like. If you like my approach and you can see what companies I'm investing in, uh, we still have that September coupon code, 50% off uh, for the monthly membership. September is the coupon code. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. That's all I've got for today. Yep.